Big Gamer Al here. How are you guys doing today? I'm super. Thanks for asking. Wow. So recently, there's been a lot of fear mongering ever since Eurogamer announced that the Nintendo Switch would be running Tegra X1 and that it would be paired back when it wasn't docked. Now, everyone and their mother apparently has been on YouTube and fear mongering that the Nintendo Switch will no longer be able to support third parties and that the latest games simply won't be able to run on the system. Now I'm going to look at some evidence that's already out there guys, it's stuff that's already known and we're going to talk through why I believe that actually this is not the case and it will be quite easy in fact to run a lot of the latest games on Nintendo Switch hardware. Now this source basically comes from a, a statement that was made previously by the guys over at From Software in that, that they were pleasantly surprised that the Dark Souls 3 engine and Dark Souls 3 itself was running quite smoothly at acceptable performance on Nintendo Switch. So why should we care about Dark Souls 3? Why should we care that From Software are happy with how this is performing on Nintendo Switch? Well, if you actually look at games that are out at the moment, and you consider which games are really pushing hardware, and which games are struggling to be run on current systems, you can look at things like Fallout 3, its use of God Rays, there's so much going on in such a large environment, draw distances, high resolution shadows and stuff like that. You can say, okay, that, that's a game that clearly hamper systems if they're trying to run it at higher resolutions. You could look at a game like Uncharted 4, platform exclusive but it is a bit of a, a memory hog and with its ability to render really high quality textures with no pairback, with no upscale, that is a game that really pushes its, its hardware. But we're going to discount that because at the end of the day Naughty Dog are kind of playing exclusively on Sony's game here so they would not be one to support the Nintendo Switch anyway. And then thirdly we'll look at Witcher 3. Um, and that is a game, along with its huge draw distances and its um, improvements in things like hair physics, have pushed a lot of PCs and consoles to the absolute limit. But with these exceptions, there's not a lot of games at the moment that are really struggling to run on current gen consoles. I mean, you just look at the likes of Doom and Battlefield 1, two of the greatest looking games of this year, running exceptionally well on consoles. And they have things in there, APIs in there, that allow them to do that. And a lot of it is to do with optimization at the end of the day. So one game that wasn't run particularly well on consoles was Bloodborne. Bloodborne was a PS4 exclusive that would run quite poorly in, at times on the PlayStation 4. It had trouble with frame pacing and it had trouble in certain areas, especially when there was a lot of alpha effects with frame rate drops. Now these tended to be two or three frames at a time, but along with the micro stutter from the frame pacing, it did kind of leave an inconsistent experience and it did make you think that this Bloodborne engine was maybe pushing the PS4 a little bit too hard. So, Dark Souls 3 runs in the Bloodborne engine. So when this made its way over to Xbox One in particular, there were some issues. As an example, Xbox One ran Dark Souls 3 at 900p instead of 1080p, and it ran it at a frame rate between 26 and 31 FPS, which isn't what we would like in a locked 30 frames per second action game. Also, you know, there were some frame pacing issues as well, and some of these shadows were actually dropped to a lower resolution than they were on the PS4. So it's obvious straight away to us that the Bloodborne engine is quite taxing on modern day consoles. Now, if the Nintendo Switch is already running Dark Souls 3 and that enhanced version of the Bloodborne engine at acceptable performance, which to me says 26 to 30 frames per second is what From Software consider acceptable performance, then that goes to show you that games such as a Battlefield 1, a FIFA or something of that nature would run very smoothly on the Nintendo Switch because this is an engine that does use a lot of volumetric lighting, a lot of god rays, a lot of alpha effects, and it is an, a very fast paced action game. Now I know what you're going to say, how is this possible? How can the Nintendo Switch with these lower specs possibly compete with the likes of Xbox One and PlayStation 4? And it's not so much about competing, it's about hitting what the minimum requirement is for these developers to bring third party support. And let me explain to you how they're going to do that. So the first thing is, the Switch has got a reduced clock and CUDA core count compared to the GPUs in the Xbox One and in the PlayStation 4. But when you look at a game like Dark Souls 3, which is a very demanding game, you look at the minimum specs for PCs, and it talks about things like the 460 and 470 GTX variants, um, the, the actual CUDA core count is a lot lower than PS4 and Xbox One anyway, as is the base clock. You're talking more like 7 and 800 megahertz base clocks there, which is much more in line with what we expect from Tegra X1 and the Nintendo Switch. So it's not out of the realms of possibility that the Nintendo Switch will be able to run Dark Souls 3 to a decent extent. Secondly, the Nintendo Switch is running newer hardware. Now every year when we see the you know, GPU manufacturers, AMD and 
and Nvidia bringing out newer GPUs, um, there's a, a certain amount of efficiencies that they make over the previous generation. And it's a lot of this can be efficiencies in losing wafers in production. It could a lot of it can be efficiencies in from wattage and voltage and turning that into GPU horsepower. But if you even look at graphics cards like the 1050 Ti, the 750 Ti, and how they actually compared against the older, more expensive GPUs they replaced, you'd be surprised at how such a cheaper and lower spec GPU can actually outperform older, less efficient GPUs. One thing that really kind of strikes me at the moment is how the current GTX 1060 seems to be somewhat of a sweet spot for a lot of people in that it's handing the you know kind of GTX 980 and 390 it's handling these huge graphics cards for their time easily in, in current games so it makes me think that the newer hardware when you consider that PS4 and Xbox One were kind of pre sixth generation in GPUs obviously they were on the AMD side but we're talking about they were in development before the you know 5970 or something like that in that they were really looking at specs similar to the gtx 650 and we're talking about graphics cards you know that were new you know five six years ago and these things were in production you know and r d even before then so for something that was literally being researched back in 2012 it's going to fare a lot better efficiency wise than the latest consoles the third issue we're going to talk about is scaling and scaling is something that has been talked about a lot between the xbox one and ps4 in the 900p and 1080p resolutions but this is less of an issue for nintendo's console because of its hybrid nature it's not something you're going to want to get down and study oh you know have i lost you know a hundred lines vertically or horizontally here in resolution you're really going to be looking at what well, is this going to run console quality on my TV and am I going to be able to take it on the go and is it going to run without completely crashing frame rate wise? Well, I think it's going to be able to do that based mostly on how it scales. Now, I think Nintendo are happy to see games dropping from high to medium settings or medium to low settings as far as graphics qualities go and definitely, obviously, when you're taking it on the move with it being paired back so far, I think you're definitely going to see a drop from 1080p to 720p on the handheld. And um, that's going to make a massive difference. I mean, if you consider the difference between high settings and medium and low settings, and then the difference in 1080p resolution to 720p resolution, you can almost double the overhead for optimization there for the developers and allow them to really stabilize those frame rates and make the game much more playable than they would have been able to if they were trying to chase Xbox One and PS4 standards. Ultimately, what I think that From Software have shown us is by taking one of the most demanding games currently in Dark Souls 3 and getting it to run at acceptable performance levels on Nintendo Switches, that given a bit of time, given a bit of optimization, maybe scaling back a few of those settings, you don't really have too much of a drama bringing the latest games to a Nintendo Switch. In fact, to be honest, these developers have been doing it so long on PCs, trying to optimize for older GPUs, that scaling back a few graphical settings and reducing the resolution, they know already roughly what people are, are going for image quality wise, and they all know what Nintendo wants from them. And I think a lot of these developers will find it very easy to bring these games across. NBA 2Ks, your FIFAs, your CODs, your Far Cry, your Assassin's Creed's, they're all going to run like a dream. I don't think we should worry about it too much. There's going to be the odd exception along the way. Games that really push the boundaries, something like a Witcher 3, which are, they're always going to struggle to bring it across. And if they want to bring it across, it will take the extra development time. But I think in the whole, third-party support shouldn't be too much of an issue. It is going to be based mostly on units sold, and it won't really be based on whether or not the uh, core clock has been reduced when it goes to handheld mode, whether or not it's an X1 or an X2. Not really going to make a difference, guys. Right. If you like the video today, guys, if you want me to keep digging into this Nintendo Switch tech stuff, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll keep bringing you the content.